Yo, 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 what's up, our fellow listeners? Welcome to BI Talk Podcast, where we discuss foreign medicines and bioinformatics in the nutshells. Back with me, Albert, again, your one and only true host. But today, uh, sadly, I will be alone again. Well, just like any other nights. I'm kidding. Uh, because, yeah, my friends, today is going to be the speakers for uh, today's session. So, for today's sessions, we will be covering up the collaborations of biomedicines and bioinformatics in drug discovery and development processes. Uh, I highly suggest uh, you guys to listen to our past four episodes to catch up with the topics that we are going to discuss today, which the link is on the description below, so do check it out. And without further ado, yeah, um, please welcome our lovely speakers, Bernard, Enrica, Karin, and of course, our daddy, Jeremy. Woo! Say hello, guys. Hi, guys. It's me again. Hello, Bernard. hello guys. Nice to meet you again. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hey. Hi. Where is our daddy, Dad? Hey there. Hello. Hi, 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 hi. <laughs> so today is quite enthusiastic, eh? So yeah, um, let me start with the most important question. So uh, how was your day so far? Um, I'm doing great. Okay, same for me. Make it two. Make it three. So uh, I think everyone has quite a good day. So yeah, let's start our um, discussion. So today, uh, drug discovery and developing. So in the process of discovering and developing, uh, developing a drug, uh, there must be a lot of steps to be done, right? So, um, what do the general procedures uh, look like? Um, you can say that in simple terms, the drug discovery process can be divided into two parts, the research and development, or for short R&D and manufacturing. So after that, it is like any good, it needs to be quality tested, packaged, and well distributed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, that's in general terms, in simple terms. like but. Um, let's try to dissect it, uh, right? So let's try to uh, dive in further. So, um, what are the detailed procedures within the R&D okay, stage? So R&D stages are really long and very complicated process that undergo multiple stages to eventually be accepted as a new drug. It all started from the uh, therapeutic concept that has been known widely, which by conducting literature reviews or studies of other experiments, we can actually find a potential target. And furthermore, uh, selecting and validating the target is needed to limit the scope of the experiment as well as to ensure the target that we focus on indeed related to the purpose of discovery, for example, disturbing the pathway of certain diseases. The next step are the lead screening and optimization. The lead screening could be done by performing high throughput, uh, throughput, throughput screening of large compounds to find primary hits. The hits would then undergo further screening to confirm the specificity of the target of the drug. After it is confirmed, the hits become lit, which is subjected to uh, four small RAS compounds, testing to develop structure activity relationship. After that, the lids will enter the optimization process, in which the lids will be further analyzed and optimized for the target. Eventually, it will enter the development stage. Um, um, for the development stage, uh, it started with the pre-clin- preclinical stage where we identify a safety, uh, potent and efficacious uh, drug that requires uh, thorough preclinical testing, which evaluates aspects of pharmacodynamics, pharmac- pharmacokinetics, and toxicology uh, in vitro and in vivo setting. Um, and uh, in vivo setting, it is usually 
performed in a model animal such as mouse and that next is the clinical stage where the developed drugs will be tried in humans but this stage will consist of three different phases including the phase one phase two and phase three uh, and the last but not least is the regulatory approval okay hold on bennett you haven't explained about phase one phase two and phase three so let me help you for that and uh, to explain briefly so in phase one aims to observe the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics parameters uh, in which the highest dosage of drugs could be consumed by humans without causing serious adverse effects can be determined it also aims to determine the most appropriate drug administration method either orally intravenously as well as topically So for phase two, it uh, aimed to further op- uh, observe the safety and efficacy of the drugs, and the study could be conducted uh, usually from several months up to two years, and it is usually divided into two phases: um, phase two A, where they observe the dosing requirements, and phase two B, where they observe the drug efficacy and predetermine dosage. And in addition, for phase three, it aims to confirm the drug safety and efficacy. So the study is can be randomized, controlled, and multi-center to provide the long-term safety data. Okay, guys, that's... You guys ex- explained it well. So, last is the regulatory approval, where the drugs will need an approval by the regulatory authorities, such as the BPOM in Indonesia or FDA in uh, USA and then before distributed to the public. In the normal phase, this process might take about two or uh, two to three years until the drug is fully developed. Okay, right, so I think there was a really good insight, right? I said it, yeah. So yeah, so making a drug, discovering a drug, developing a drug is not like as easy as all of you guys uh, thinking it took quite uh, a timetable and so yeah and now we can move on to the main topic the more interesting part that is not uh, it doesn't mean that the previous topic is not really interesting but yeah uh, but this is the highlight of today's topic so yeah the work collaboration of both majors in discovering and developing drugs so daddy can we start from you please tell us what's your role in this process um let me try my best here so in the bioinformatics field we are more into working with the analysis such as the genome analysis and the assembly of the genome called genome assembly for experiment wise we are not doing any wet lab experiments such as the, those that BM people do in vitro or in vivo. Instead, we only do dry lab experiments, such as molecular docking. I see. So, you're always the clean guys in the lab and don't do any of the day jobs, right? Um, yeah, whatever you want to say about us, but don't underestimate us, because without us, your experiment means nothing. Or you can even do your experiment without our help. Ooh, okay, sounds threatening, but yeah, why is that? Tell us, why is that? Could you elaborate? Um, please? Okay, so let's take the example of the COVID case. During the testing and diagnosis stage, the bioinformatics role can be seen in the identification of the viral strain, right? This can be done using the genome sequencing, uh, as mentioned in previous sessions. This uses the NGS technology, and from there, the obtained data will be parts of the whole sequence, which need to be put together in an assembly process called the genome assembly. And then the assembly process can uh, use against a reference sequence or done from scratch using the de novo assembly method. So it's like putting uh, the puzzles together. Yeah? So after that, uh, what do we do from there? 
what do we do from there yeah so the next stage is after the whole sequence is made after the assembly analysis can be done to identify the origins of dna or rna sequence and then we can annotate the sections of the sequence for the functions identify the mutations that happen when compared to a normal reference sequence and uh, much more analysis Ah, I see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've seen that a lot in on other courses. So yeah. Uh, however, other than the uh, sequence technology used in the testing and the diagnosis, uh, what about in vaccine or treatment research? Oh, you mean about the uh, molecular docking technique? That technique has been used to find yeah, alternative yeah. treatments against the SARS-CoV-2 virus. You may have heard of the drug Remdesivir. Uh, yeah, yeah. What about it? Uh, does molecular docking allow researchers uh, to find similar acting compounds or substances as the drug? Actually, you got most of it right. So the substances such as curcumin and alcin, those are the compounds that are found in cumin and garlic. Um, they possess antiviral yeah. properties that can bind to the spike protein of the SARS-CoV-2 uh, protein uh, virus, and they can inhibit the spike protein from binding to the target protein on our uh, cells. The molecular docking's role allow the research to identify the binding energy that is required or used when a compound binds to a ligand. It would also allow researchers to know which amino acid residues are used in the binding. And another technique called molecular dynamics allows researchers to analyze the movement of atoms and molecules for a period of time. And this technique can be useful as it helps researcher in uh, knowing uh, how stable the binding is. Okay, I see. Thank you. Uh, uh, I think that's enough from the bioinformatics perspective, right? the dry lab part. So let's continue to see from the biomedicine field, the wet lab. Part. Uh, start with the same question. What is your role in this process? Okay, so in our field, we also do analysis like the bioinfor- bioinformatics too, but unlike them, um, we do analysis for our experiment results, such as what does the result imply and how is it compared to the literature, literature and all that. It is whether it is reliant or not. And Experiment wise, we are the ones that analyze the and confirm the prediction made by the bio, bioinformaticians and observe it in vivo and or in vitro. Ah, uh, okay, I got it. Yeah, so uh, unlike daddy, so yeah, it's not the clean guys. Uh, quote unquote the clean guys you do the quote unquote dirty jobs for the experiment <laughs> yeah yeah that's okay. also your job oh yeah I keep forgetting that yeah so yeah I'm also the host here and uh, why is it um really important though uh, isn't the knowledge from bioinformatics alone mm, is enough Albert why are you take, attacking your major though <laughs> and yeah it is enough on paper but we cannot know what will happen in a real life setting so this is where we farmers and people do our jobs Yeah, as we were told before, we are the ones that conduct the experiment in vivo or in vitro, such as in animal models. So if the animal's model results the same results as in in silico results, then we can safely conclude that the test compound has the same effectiveness with its efficacy. However, after we conducted the animal model experiment, we have to proceed uh, to the clinical trial phase, as we already discussed before, to see the results in humans. Ah, okay, 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 I finally get the point, yeah, so, thank you, but last but not least, can both of you give us a real-life example of your work collaboration? 
Oh, I think we can take an example from our last project. So we did a collaboration project examining the efficacy of trastuzumab, a humanized IgG1 monoclonal antibody as an adjuvant treatment for breast cancers with HER2 positive. And in this project, we found out that HER2 oh, yeah. is actively doing mutations which would result in the changes of its product. Since the drugs target the HER2 genes product, the efficacy is brought into question. And yeah, to overcome this facilitation, we have conducted the in silico experiment by doing the molecular docking. And uh, this is where our bioinformatics friend helped us obtain the results, right, Jeremy? Um, yeah, so we obtained the results in terms of the binding affinity of the trust to zoom up. With the HER2, it clearly showed that there were differences in their binding affinities. However, the efficacy of the yeah. trust to zoom up is indisputable as the number of differences in the mutated gene alone is not significant compared to the normal HER2. Uh, after we obtain that result, we have to verify that result by doing the in, the in vitro experiment in the MCF7 model. This model can be used since this model also manifests the hair of respiration. Therefore, it will suit best for our experiment. However, we also, we also have to verify the hair to Korean of the model by using sequencing from the bioinformatics field. Ah, uh, yeah, I remember that project, it's just like, since yesterday. Uh, yeah. Right, so, that's all really interesting topics. And it was really good discussion, guys. Um, sadly, we have to come the end of our sessions from today. So, yeah, I realized that both my medicine and my information could work together. Right? It's not like the others can uh, couldn't live if the other is not around and so big thank you to Bernard, Enrica, Karin, Jeremy and of course me as the host for today's interesting topic uh, that is all for today's podcast uh, ladies and gentlemen so in our next podcast uh, our next few podcasts our next few episodes will it will be special uh, because we'll be inviting guest speakers uh, I'm looking forward to these guest speakers so yeah See you in the next episodes. Bye. 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 Take care now.